So you're new to the sewing space, but you're not quite sure whether you should get an industrial sewing machine or a domestic sewing machine. If this sounds like you or someone that you know, then stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to tell you a few differences between an industrial and a domestic sewing machine and I'm going to share some recommendations so that you can buy your new sewing machine and get started on your journey. What's up guys, I'm The Quaint Boss and this is The Quaint Pursuit. By the end of this video, you know exactly which sewing machine to buy because I am going to define the two types of sewing machines, I'm going to tell you the differences between them, I am going to tell you what they can be used for, and I'm also going to give you some recommendations. If you would like to skip to any of those topics, then you can check out the timestamps in the description box down below. But if you're new to the sewing space, then I think you should watch the entire video because it's jam-packed with value and there's something that you can learn from every single section. If you're looking for weekly sewing DIY and pattern making videos, then hit the subscribe button because this is the place to be. Yes, this is the space to be. So subscribe and let's actually get into the video. This right here is the first sewing machine I ever had. It's a brother sewing machine and it's domestic. A domestic sewing machine is a sewing machine used in the home for personal and family sewing projects. So it has a spot that you will plug into and that spot is connected to a foot pedal. You just plug that into the wall press the power button and your sewing machine is ready to go. So one of the benefits of having a domestic sewing machine is that you have access to a number of different stitch types. There's this dial here that allows you to switch between the different stitch designs and there is a balance wheel at the side that you can use to raise and lower your needle. This right here is the stitch length dial, the stitch width dial, and the tension dial. These are very important. This right here is the reverse lever that allows you to back stitch on your fabric. And now this is like a detachable piece that you can store items in. Now let's take a look at the bobbin of the domestic sewing machine. It's plastic, unlike the industrial sewing machine. Another thing about this in comparison to the industrial sewing machine is that you have to actually unthread your needle and stop stitching in order to fill this bobbin. In comparison to the industrial sewing machine that fills while you sew. This hair is basically the presser foot razor. So it raises the presser foot when you're ready to place your fabric underneath and yeah this is how the needle looks i'm going to show you guys how to thread this sewing machine the guidelines are usually on the domestic sewing machine but i can still show you a video as to how to thread a domestic sewing machine now we're gonna look at the industrial sewing machine and i got this when i started my business like officially an industrial sewing machine is a heavy duty sewing machine powered by a motor and it's best suited for heavy materials in large quantities and at higher speeds. All industrial sewing machines have a thread guide. It has its own independent bobbin winding system that winds while you sew, so you don't have to stop sewing in order to fill your bobbin, unlike with the domestic sewing machine. It has a stitch length dial, but no stitch width dial. It has a reverse lever for back stitching, and it also has a balance wheel that's connected to a belt that's connected to the motor. So this is like a closer look. This is the throat plate and as you can see it has markings on it. This is the tension dial or this basically when you turn this knob the tension gets higher or lower. 
and this is the presser foot control that lifts up the presser foot or lowers it this here is a knee lift that allows you to move the presser foot up and down without having to touch the presser foot lever at the back of the sewing machine this is the motor and it's connected to this nice foot pedal here and this is the on and off switch there's a nice little draw that you can place your tools that you want to be able to access quickly and let's look at the bobbin so the bobbin for this is much more conveniently hidden than with the domestic sewing machine it is a metal bobbin with holes in it as you can see compared to the domestic sewing machine and there's a bobbin case that comes with this one and there's a specific way that you have to place the thread in comparison to this bobbin case another thing about an industrial sewing machine is that there's an oil reservoir underneath and that is for the purpose of keeping the motor lubricated I guess so you put all-purpose oil in here and around the balance wheel there is this belt that is connected to the motor down below and this is the motor so you can see like all the information and this is the power cord so it's pretty heavy duty stuff there are a few differences to keep in mind when it comes to these two types of sewing machines. First is that an industrial sewing machine is run by a motor while a domestic sewing machine isn't. This means that an industrial sewing machine runs much faster than a domestic sewing machine, however, it's a lot louder. An industrial sewing machine is attached to a table to sew on, while a domestic sewing machine doesn't come with a table. However, this makes a domestic sewing machine perfectly portable, while the industrial sewing machine isn't and it requires a lot more space than the domestic. Most industrial sewing machines only come with one type of stitch, which is usually a straight stitch. Sometimes they come with a zigzag stitch, but most domestic sewing machines come with a variety of stitch types, as you saw earlier in the video. Industrial sewing machines come with a bobbin filling system that fills the bobbin while you sew. However, a domestic sewing machine with that, you have to actually stop in the middle of your sewing to fill the bobbin and I found that part really annoying. Industrial sewing machines stitch just about any type of fabric, but domestic sewing machines are best suited for lightweight and medium fabrics. They can't withstand the pressure with like denim and leatherette, that kind of thing requires something more heavy duty. My advice is that if you're going to be starting a sewing business where you're going to be stitching heavy materials, where you're going to be stitching multiple things and you want to go fast and you want to be able to handle any workload, I would definitely recommend getting an industrial sewing machine. However, if you're just a mom or whatever and all you want to do is sew things for your children or for your family, your loved ones, make things for yourself or make really small items, then I would definitely say get a domestic sewing machine. If you're gonna be stitching like curtains for your home, pillowcases for your home, then get yourself a domestic sewing machine. But I personally like having an industrial sewing machine because I sew bags for a living. And if you wanna check out my bags, you can go to my website, www.thequaintpursuit.com and these are a few of the bags I make. I make them from scratch myself using my industrial sewing machine. When I first started out, I bought that brother domestic sewing machine and it wasn't working all that well for me because one, it couldn't stitch the leather that I was working with and two, it couldn't stitch the spandex that I was working with either because it's just not really suited for that or you have to use like a specific type of needle. 
So my next best option was to actually just get this Singer Industrial Sewing Machine. If you're gonna be getting a domestic sewing machine, Singer is a good brand, Brother is also a good brand. If you're gonna be getting an industrial sewing machine, the best brand is honestly Juki. I have worked with Juki before and I absolutely love how Juki stitches in comparison to my Singer sewing machine. But based on the information I know, Singer Industrial Sewing Machines are not the best. If you're in Jamaica, then the best place to find these sewing machines, if you want to get like a Juki sewing machine, then you could check out Jam Sew. They are actually near Crossroads. Just, just Google Jam Sew and you will find their information. They have a Facebook page and I'm pretty sure that they have listed their number on the internet. And you can also check out Singer and Quartz. If you want to get really nice brother sewing machines, check out Quartz. I brought my brother, I bought my brother sewing machine at Quartz and I bought my industrial sewing machine at Singer. If you're in the States, you could check out OfferUp. That's an app that basically allows people to resell items. And you can also check out Craigslist. Just type in domestic sewing machine or industrial sewing machine. And I'm pretty sure there are also sewing shops nearby you or sewing and vac shops, vacuum and sewing shops. Yeah, that you could basically check out and find sewing machines because while I was in California I actually bought a sewing machine there or I was gifted a sewing machine and we went to this shop that all they sold were sewing machines. It was really cool because I got to actually test out the sewing machine before buying it. I don't remember the model of Juki sewing machine I got but it was definitely a Juki industrial sewing machine and he was able to put a motor into it that was silent that wouldn't make any noise while I was sewing and I really love that because that means I could have been sewing at any hour of the night and it wouldn't interrupt anybody as opposed to having a sewing machine that has like a really loud motor you have to be really considerate of the people who are around you with domestic sewing machines they don't make that noise they don't have that humming noise because they don't have a motor that's running however while you're stitching it's gonna make noises of course when the needle impacts the fabric I really hope that this video has been helpful for you. Let me know which one of the sewing machines you're gonna get. Are you gonna get a domestic one or an industrial one? I feel like all the tips that I gave you should definitely give you a concrete idea of each sewing machine. And from here, you should be able to choose which one you're gonna get for yourself. I'm so excited for you because you're a part of the sewing space, you're new to this space, and trust me, you're gonna have a lot of fun on this journey. And I just wanna say thank you so much for stopping by to watch this video. I really hope it was helpful. And if it was, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for weekly DIY sewing and pattern making videos from The Quaint Boss. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Quaint Boss and tag me. Take a screenshot of this video and tag me so that your friends can discover my channel too. Blessings and love. I will see you next week.